Suppose that t of n is equal to theta of g of n and g of n in turn is theta of h of n. Does this imply that t of n is theta of h of n? Well, one of the ways to examine this question is to again use limits. So when we say that t of n is theta of g of n, we know that limit of n tending to infinity of t of n divided by g of n is going to be some constant c1 greater than 0. Likewise, if g of n is theta of h of n, the limit n tending to infinity of g of n divided by h of n is going to be some other constant c2 greater than 0. So if we multiply these two equations, limit of n tending to infinity of t of n divided by g of n multiplied by g of n divided by h of n is going to be t of n divided by h of n. And this is going to be equal to c1 times c2. And since both c1 and c2 are positive constants, their product is going to be a positive constant. So we can conclude from this that t of n has the same rate of growth as h of n or t of n is theta of h of n. Now what if we had a big O here instead of a big theta? So we see that this uh, big theta notation is transitive. If one function is big theta of a second function and that second function is big theta of a third function, then the first function is big theta of the third function. Does this apply, does this transitive transitivity hold for the big O notation? Yes, it does, because if t of n is big O of g of n, ratio of t of n to g of n as n tends to infinity is either 0 or some constant c1 greater than 0. Likewise, the ratio of g of n to h of n as n tends to infinity is either 0 or some other constant c2 greater than 0. So if we multiply the two, we'll get limit n tending to infinity t of n by h of n is either 0 or some constant c1, c2 greater than 0. This means t of n is big O of h of n because if you remember here there are two cases there are two ways in which t of n can be big O of h of n. One is if their ratio is 0 or if their ratio is some constant greater than 0. So transitivity also applies to the big O notation. What about the big omega notation? We can use very similar reasoning here as the big O. If t of n is big omega of g of n, the ratio of the two functions for large n will tend towards either infinity or some constant c1 greater than 0. The same applies to ratio of g of n and h of n. The ratio will either be infinity or some constant c2 greater than 0.
So when we take the limit of n tending to infinity of that product, we are going to get t of n divided by h of n as n becomes very large will either be infinity or it will be c1, c2. If any one of these is infinity, the product is going to be infinity. But if both of them are some positive constants c1 and c2, then their product will be the product of those constants c1 and c2, c1 times c2. So we see that transitivity holds for the big omega notation as well. That is, if, if t of n is big omega of g of n and g of n is big omega of h of n, then t of n is big omega of h of n. And again, just to remind you, t of n is big omega of f of n in, in, in two ways. Either t of n should have the same rate of growth as f, f of n, which means their ratio should tend towards some positive constant, finite constant, or their ratio needs to be infinite, in which case we can say that t of n has a larger rate of growth than f of n. So theta, big O, and big omega, all three notations satisfy the property of transitivity. Now it's easy to see that the same also applies to the little o notation and to the little omega notation. Suppose t of n is little o of g of n and g of n is little o of h of n. So if t of n is little o of g of n, the ratio must necessarily be zero. Likewise, the ratio of g of n and h of n should converge towards zero as n grows large towards infinity. So if we take the product of those uh, uh, of, 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 of the left hand side, we get limit as n tending to infinity of t of n by h of n is going to converge to zero because both the right hand sides are zero if we are looking at the little o notation. And so t of n is going to be little o of h of n. And so big little o also satisfies the transitivity property. Likewise, if t of n is little omega of g of n, the ratio of t of n and g of n must be infinity. t of n is little omega of f of n. If t of n grows larger, grows at a rate that is larger than the rate at which f of n grows. So the ratio is infinity. Likewise, the ratio of, so the ratio of t of n and, uh, to g of n will be infinity and the ratio of g of n to h of n will be infinity. And so if we take the product, the ratio of t of n to h of n will be infinity times infinity, which is infinity. And so we can say that t of n will also be little omega of h of n. So transitivity is satisfied by transitivity is satisfied by all five. We have satisfied by the big theta notation, the big O notation, the big omega notation, the little o notation and the little omega notation. What about reflexivity? Is t of n equal to theta of t of n? Well, what is the limit of n tending to infinity of t of n divided by t of n? Well, this is going to be 1. And 1 is a positive constant. And so if you look at this particular case, t of n will be big theta of t of n t of n will also be big O of t of n and t of n will also be big omega of t of n. But t of n will not be little o of t of n 
and T of n will not be little omega of T of n because the ratio of T of n to T of n in either of these two cases should either be uh, should be either zero or in infinity respectively and the ratio actually is one so reflexivity is satisfied by the theta notation the big o notation and the big omega notation what about uh, symmetry So let's say that t of n is big theta of f of n. Can we say that f of n is big theta of t of n? Yes, because if t of n is theta of f of n, this means the limit of n limit as n tends to infinity of t of n to f of n is some constant c greater than zero. And if this is true, then it also must be the case that if we take the reciprocal of this, f of n divided by t of n, then this limit is going to be 1 by c, which is also greater than 0. This is a constant greater than 0. And so we can say that f of n is big theta of t of n. But what, what about the big O notation? Let's say T of n is uh, big O of f of n. This means the ratio of T of n to f of n as n tends to infinity will either be 0 or it will be some constant c, some finite constant c that's positive. But if the ratio of T of n to f of n happens to be 0, then the ratio of f of n to t of n will be infinity. So transitivity is not satisfied by the big O notation because if t of n divided by f of n is 0, then f of n divided by t of n will neither be 0 nor will it be some positive constant. It will be infinity. So the big O notation does not satisfy symmetry. And similarly, the big omega notation does not satisfy symmetry. Let's say t of n is big omega of f of n. This means the ratio of t of n to f of n must either be infinity or some finite constant c that's positive. But in this case, the ratio of f of n to t of n will be either some positive constant 1 by c or it will be 0. So if t of n is growing larger than f of n, that is if their ratio was infinity, then the ratio of f of n to t of n will neither be infinity nor will it be some finite positive constant. It will, it will actually be 0. So f of n in such cases cannot be said to be big omega of t of n. And so big omega does not satisfy the symmetry property either. The same applies to the little omega and little o notations. If you were to look at the little omega notation, let's say t of n is little omega of f of n, this means the ratio of t of n to f of n is infinity. And in that case, the ratio of f of n to t of n will be 0. So if t of n is little omega of f of n, f of n is little o of t of n. So again, the symmetry property is not satisfied by the little omega notation. And in fact, it's not satisfied by the little o notation either. Because if one function is little o of the other, then the other function must be little omega of the first one. Because if the ratio of these two functions is 0, which is what it will be in case of the little o notation, then when we take the reciprocal, as, in, uh, as is required in this case, the reciprocal of 0 is going to be infinity. And so neither the little omega 
notation nor the little o notation satisfies the property of symmetry. It is satisfied only by the big theta notation. Here's another property. F of n, let's say f of n is big O of g of n. What can we say about g of n? Is it, is it, so we've seen that it's not big O of f of n because big O does not satisfy the symmetric property. But what can we say about uh, the relationship between g of n and f of n? For that we have to take the limit as n tends to infinity of g of n by f of n. Now since the ratio of f of n to g of n here is going to be either 0 it's going to be either 0 or some positive constant c greater than 0. This means the ratio of g of n to f of n will either be infinity or some positive constant 1 by c which I will call as some other constant k greater than 0. So if we go back to if we go back to this page we see that if the ratio of two functions is either infinity or some constant We are talking about the big omega notation here. So for the big, it's for the big omega notation that the ratio of two functions is either some positive constant or infinity. So g of n in this case will be big omega of f of n. In the same way, if f of n was little o of g of n, then g of n will be little omega of f of n. Because if f of n is little o of g of n, the ratio of f of n to g of n as n tends to infinity is going to be necessarily 0. This means the ratio of g of n to f of n as n tends to infinity is going to be necessarily infinite. And if the ratio of two functions is infinite, this means the first function is little omega of the second function or big omega. Anything that is little omega is also big omega. So we can say that g of n 